Hello, this is Marcel Khagiev, and let's look at a couple of new recording options in Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. Specifically, I want to look at the new ability of Lucid Physics to play back the recorded animation data backwards or at a speed different than at which it was actually recorded. So I have set up a pretty simple scene here. I have a global collision object, which was created using the collision sandbox button over here. I created a teapot and I just set it up vertically. And this teapot has a fluid preset and I have just configured some parameters to animate it nicely so we get a little water or mud type of action going on. So I'm just going to go out of the simulation and just press record so we get our recorded simulation in form of particles. Once we have our recorded data, I can play it back and forwards by scrubbing the scene timeline. So up to this point, this was the only way to play back the simulation. And if this object was part of your scene and it had to be animated alongside other objects, it didn't really have a lot of control. If you scroll down, to the recording settings, there is a little playback group at the bottom, and here you have some controls. The start time allows you to change the frame at which the animation starts. So if I set it to 28, for example, it will not do anything until the frame 28, and this is when the animation will start. The reverse option, if I check it, will play the animation in reverse. So as I scrub my timeline, you can see that it is actually going backwards and produces a nice effect if you want to play things backwards instead of forwards. And of course, we can play it back using the max playback functionality. There is another option called time scaling, and by default it is 1.0, but I can change this to a smaller value like 0.5 to slow down the animation. So if I set it to 0.5, you can see that it is playing exactly half of the speed of the original simulation. If I set it to even lower value like 0.1, the animation will play back at 10 times slower than the original simulation and it can produce some nice effects for you without the need to re-simulate your scene. Alternatively, I can also set it to a higher value. So I can set it to 2 to play my animation back twice as fast as it was recorded. And of course, the higher you go, the faster it will play back. Another interesting aspect of the time scaling is that it can be animated. So let's pretend we wanted to create some nice bullet time type of effect. We can start at time zero and let the animation play at a normal speed, maybe until frame number 20. And at frame number 20, I can set the auto key option and just shift click the spinner over here to create a key. And then at the next frame, I will change the time scaling parameter to a smaller value, like 0.2, for example. At this point, the animation will start playing at exactly five times slower, and we can now scrub to find the frame until which we wanted to continue playing slow. Maybe frame 90 will do. At this point, we can shift click again on the spinner to set the key, and at the very next frame, let's set it back to 1. So this can produce a nice bullet time effect for us. If I play back animation, you can see that at this point it plays back really slow and then goes back to normal speed. Maybe for an even more dramatic effect, I can go back and retime this scaling at the frame 21 to create an even slower animation. So maybe set it to 0.1. And as you see, it goes very slow and then goes fast again. If you want to have some more control over this retiming, you can always go to the graph editors menu and use the curve editor option to find your modified object in the list. And once you do that, if I expand it, we can see our playback time right away. And here I can modify the keys manually and this will allow us to specify the speed at which the animation will play back and visually have a much better control over setting these curves instead of just doing so by using the spinner control. All of these parameters are on a per object based they're not global. So this parameter in particular will only apply to my teapot animation. If I had another recorded data in the scene, I could retime it differently and maybe create a different effect. However, if I wanted multiple objects to be timed the same way, all I would do is just create an instance of the controller which controls the timing and then it would set the exact same speed at each frame for all of those objects. So I hope you can use this option to create some quick timing effects on your animations without relying on any third party tool. Thank you very much for watching.